scientific and civilization value of birth control is becoming apparent to the enlightened and the intelligent. The campaign for birth control is not merely of eugenic value, but is practically identical in ideal with the final aim of eugenics. Margaret Sanger, 1921. In her autobiography, Margaret Sanger wrote about a speech she gave in 1926 at a Ku Klux Klan rally in Silver Lake, New Jersey. The Planned Parenthood founder bragged about the fact that afterward, she was invited by 12 other Klan chapters to speak at their events. At about the same time, the American Birth Control League was changing its name to Planned Parenthood. A lot of books and reports began coming out that attempted to put a happy face on eugenics. And many of them were written by people that were associated with Planned Parenthood. The strategy here was obvious. Since the Nazis had turned eugenics into a four-letter word, the American eugenics movement decided it was time to lay low. So most of their writings during this time period downplayed the role of eugenics and couched their agenda in terms of helping the African American. Perhaps the best example of this is a 1,500-page book by eugenicist Gunnar Mergal called An American Dilemma, The Negro Problem in Modern Democracy. Commonly, it is considered a great misfortune for America that Negro slaves were ever imported. The presence of Negroes in America today is usually considered a plight of the nation. Chapter 7, page 167. All white Americans agree that if the Negro is to be eliminated, he must be eliminated slowly, so as not to hurt any living individual Negroes. Chapter 7, page 168. The only way possible of decreasing Negro population is by means of controlling fertility. Chapter 7, page 170. Earth control facilities could be extended relatively more to Negroes than to whites, since Negroes are more concentrated in the lower income and education classes. Chapter 7, page 176. One of the places where government money has been used to advance the eugenics agenda has been in the public school system. Although government-funded population control programs can be found in white schools, the evidence is that they are significantly more likely to be targeted at black schools. One example of this was seen in 1986, when it was discovered that Illinois public schools were not only distributing birth control to children, but that every one of the 50 facilities involved were in minority neighborhoods. When this information was made public, a local African-American pastor organized a campaign to stop the program. Reverend Hiram Crawford labeled the project genocide, saying that the obvious goal was to go after the Hispanic and black population. That same pattern was also found in Maryland in the 1990s. Even though the state's teen pregnancy rate was higher among white students than black students, when the contraceptive device Norplant was introduced, it was selectively marketed to children as young as 13 and predominantly black schools in Baltimore. The result was that of the first 350 girls implanted at a local middle school, 345 were African American. Then, when Norplant was approved for general distribution, of the first 100 schools selected, all 100 were in minority neighborhoods. The Norplant contraception device was developed by the Population Council in New York, which had been established in 1952 under the leadership of its president, John Rockefeller. Its next two presidents, Frederick Osborne and Frank Notstein, were both former members of the American Eugenics Society, and Notstein would later serve on the National Advisory Council of Planned Parenthood. Since 1973, legal abortion has killed more African Americans than AIDS, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and violent crime combined. Every week, more blacks die in American abortion clinics than were killed in the entire Vietnam War. And the largest chain of abortion clinics in the United States is operated by Planned Parenthood. We have now reached a point in this country that African-American women, though they make up 12% of the population, 
they account for 37% of the abortions. An African-American baby is almost five times more likely to be aborted than a white child. The abortion industry at this point kills as many African-American people every four days as the Klan killed in 150 years. And you can truly say the most dangerous place for an African-American to be is in the womb of their African-American mother. Birth control and abortion are turning out to be the great eugenic advances of our time. Frederick Osborne, founding member of the American Eugenic Society, 1973. The best way to hate a nigger is to hate him before he is born. Leander Perez, Louisiana State Judge, 1970.